Hello, welcome back. In the last set of videos, we have created our first VUGen script, uh, and that VUGen script is basically recording the following activities that it is logging in and then it is going to browse a course and it log out. So now the script is ready. Now we are going to see how to replay the script and then what are the options that we have while replaying the script. Those options are called runtime setting. All right, and this is your script. You can access the runtime setting by clicking here. Let's explore what we have in our runtime setting. The first one is run logic. E how many iterations I want to run? If I make it two, then whatever there in that action, those things will be executed sequentially two times. That means it's going to start with this web underscore URL module and it's going to going to finish it web underscore link and then come back and redo the same steps again. And then let's say I give two iterations to complete. Then the next setting gives you how I'm going to do that my first iteration is going to finish and then immediately after the first iteration without waiting anything should I start? If that is the case then check on this radio button. If you want to do, if you want to pass your iteration so then this is the option that if with this configuration your second iteration is going to start after 60 second of finishing first iteration. However, if you give a random then it will it will give you two numbers so that means the second iteration is going to start any time between 60 to 90 second all right then if you click on the last option the second iteration is going to start at a fixed interval and that fixed interval is 60 second that means irrespective of iteration number one complete or not the second iteration is going to start the, the, the consequent iterations are going to start in every 60 seconds if you choose this option similarly you can make it random so that the second so consequent iteration can start any time between 60 to 90 second next option is log this logging is necessary to debug the script if I click on extended log then I can see the data returned by the server even the complete TCP trace that if I want I can get by clicking on this advanced trace okay so enable logging when you want to debug your script but whenever you want to run the benchmark then it's a good idea to disable because if you start logging in all those things your script is going to take more resource so sometimes the results may not be reliable okay so the best practice is to disable logging when you run the actual benchmark next parameter is think time so let's say this is my uh, my my login activity and then after the login activity finish so that the login activity is going to finish at line number 27 so the script the, the current script whatever is written that means just after I log in I immediately go and click on the test course that may not be realistic because a user wants to see something what is there on the on the page before he or she clicks on another link all right so therefore what we need to do we can put a think time so for example some think time being recorded at this point okay but there is no think time between the log submit form and the test course let's say we we put a think time and let's say that think time is like this let's say we put we put a think time of 11 second okay so even if you put the think time for 11 second however if you in in the runtime setting if you say ignore think time then then all your think times will be ignored okay when it's going to run viewgen is not going to care about whatever you put here okay so that means the the configuration the runtime setting will take precedence over the api calls all right and when it is necessary you want to debug the script while you're debugging the script you do not want to necessarily 
wait for 11 second and go to the next step so ignore think time is a good idea when you want to debug the script however in in the benchmark scenario you can give and this kind of configuration all the configurations i think is self explanatory and if you if you have some doubts just just hover your mouse on top of that then you can get a lot of hints here okay and i don't want to really go in detail about those things but this is how you can do during the benchmark time we are going to use a think time that is not kind of a constant so the think time instead of having a fixed think time it is always recommended to have some sort of randomized think time and with with you know with some minimum value and maximum value and usually and those randomized think time follow some kind of gaussian distribution pattern and then some additional attribute attributes this uh, additional attributes is helpful when you want to test some application not the browser based application but some kind of app where you can give some command line ag argument when you start that program okay and in the miscellaneous you have multiple options that if a, if an error occurred in the script then you have option to continue or you have option to fail it or you can generate a snapshot at the point of time when that error occurred so that you can you can visualize later why that error occurred and this will help you in debugging whenever you run 100 users you can run 100 processes if you click on this if you choose this then you will run a v user per thread and also there will be a configuration parameter that we will see in the in the controller how many threads that we are going to run per process okay and b, and the best practice is to run v user as thread when you run the web applications because if you run as thread it, it will it will take less cpu and less memory footprint and therefore the load generating clients are more scalable however in certain application in certain protocol it is it's a good idea to run as process to avoid thread contentions and so on all right and then by clicking on this thing you can define an each action okay whatever we're seeing here as a transaction okay so i think you know i don't really care about these two things what i do i will create my own transaction which i'm going to show you in the very next video and then data format extension don't worry about this thing right now we will have a complete separate video explaining about data format extension okay and custom web request right and also you can you can simulate a network speed by clicking on this thing and this is very important because whenever you are testing a web application don't assume that your users are privileged enough to have Two gigabyte per second internet con internet connection so that's why like you know for how the application behaving at a 128 kbps if you want to understand that then check on this check this uh, radio button and then you select what kind of speed that you want to uh, choose so in that case the view gen whenever is going to generate the load is going to take care of those bandwidth considerations then then the browser emulation that by clicking on this like you know you can choose what kind of browser that you want to emulate okay and if you choose use custom then it's probably going to emulate all those browsers then you can emulate browser cache and browser cache is that is what normally people used to do all the static content will be cached in the browser cache all right so therefore if you do not simulate browser cache if you run multiple times then for the same user I mean for the multiple uh, iterations is going to unnecessarily the view gen is going to get those those static resources which is not what is realistic because if you have a real browser then then you should have cached those things okay so therefore you can you can simulate browser cache and if you want to simulate the browser cache also you can give the values like you know for you know how what is the cache size and so on this is called internet protocol that content check like 
if you want to enable the content check during the replay then you can click on this new application and then you, you enable what kind of rules like you now if you want to go to the home page what uh, what you should see there okay so you can basically you know, you know you know give the new rule and we'll see in some of the videos that okay you search for this text like you now if you want to say login then just see like login happened or not okay so that is what kind of you know checks that you can do okay so let's say you know, this is your you know corporate firewall and you are behind the corporate firewall so this is the this is the view so this is the view gen and then so somewhere here there is a server okay so then basically if you want in order to connect to the server view gen has to go through a proxy server through the proxy server then it can go to the outside network so essentially in that kind of scenario if you are behind a proxy server then you have to give what is the proxy server address okay so if you so if you give this huge proxy server then you have to give the http address of the proxy server the port number and so on so in that way like you know view gen is going to forward those requests to the proxy server and the proxy server is going to going to get those response back to the uh, view gen and then there's a preference so that you know you can do uh, like you know so sometimes you know whenever we're going to generate the so while while generate generating the load we also need some additional statistics so that we are going to see in the very last chapter when we're going to when, whenever we are going to you going to start analyzing the result and there we need sometimes hits per second you know how many bytes per response that is coming per second so those kind of calculations that 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 will be done if you if you select these options if you hover around these options then you can get more hints about the functionality then download filter in the download filter sometimes whenever we want to uh, access a say web page and that web page might have uh, some images or certain things that comes from some other servers okay so whenever you're going to test a whenever you're going to do a load test it is not really recommended to stress other people's server okay so that means if my if my images are coming from wikipedia then if i want to run 1 million times you know if i simulate 1 million users then unnecessarily you are going to stress the wikipedia website with 1 million request so that is not not desirable and also that is not a really a good practice so what you can do you can come here and select exclude address from the list and then you can add then you can add the url that is wikipedia.com so in that case if there is in if you have recorded any images that is coming from wikipedia.com then by this option view gen in during the runtime is not going to get those images so this is all about runtime setting and runtime setting is really important and a lot of time people do not understand runtime setting they run the test and then they get different results and and that doesn't really make sense why they are getting those things so therefore just go through this runtime setting properly and set it up so that you can you can have confidence on your performance results